What you doing, Ziff? <laughs> hey, kia ora. Helen Brams here coming to you live from Claremont, Florida, where it has been a very windy day. I hope you've had a super fantastic sparkling day. How did your challenges go? Did you, let's see, we had the mindset of belief, because if you don't, excuse the squeaking, somebody's found her tennis ball that squeaks. We're gonna we're gonna play with the ball for a little bit. <laughs> um, so with the with the mindset of belief, did you find in yourself that you could believe in yourself so that you could believe that you could achieve success and the things that you want in life? Because if you don't believe in yourself, then how are you going to be able to believe that you can achieve other things? So the the thing for belief today was very was um was a good one. I thought I thought that was a good one today, and so I had to. Re, um, rethink about things and about you know how much do I actually believe in myself do I believe I have the skills to do what I need to do do I believe that I can learn the skills that I need and that sort of thing so it's um, it was getting into the mind and having a really good think about things you know what do I actually believe in and how much do I believe in myself because I am my own biggest obstacle just like you are your own biggest obstacle it's not the things around us it's what's in here that's our biggest obstacle so if we can get in there the mindset of belief and believing in um, in what we can accomplish and believing in ourselves that we are capable of accomplishing great things great things will happen so that was today's mindset was all about belief um, our business goal was processes looking at, at your processes if you were to have somebody come into your office and sit down and do one task, it could be answering the phone for a new client. What is the process for bringing that new client on board? What is the process after you take an order for, from order to shipment? What is the process? What are the steps that the order has to go through in order for it to be fulfilled and shipped out? So looking at your processes, are there anywhere there's some breakdowns in there that we can now fix those, fill in the gaps, put the correct processes in place so that we can sorry, so that we can then um, have our business running more efficiently because the more processes you have for the different things and the better and the more fine-tuned they are, the better it is that if something happens to you, somebody's able to step in and take over without much instruction or, um, and it's something too that you can then sell with your business if you're looking at selling your business later on, it's preparing for, for sale later on. And the other thing about processes too is that if you're not 100% on task that day, you have a process that you go through step by step to get something done so it's not just an automatic thing where you can easily miss things it's checking off each step of the process so how are your processes going and then your fun activity which i didn't get to do today and you'll find out why in a minute was making a fort out of blankets and cushions and chairs and furniture and and having a picnic in there and just having a fun time um i used to lo i loved making forts when i was a kid i loved um, making them with my grandkids. I love making them with my when, my, when I was babysitting my older nephews back in New Zealand with Jacob and Caleb. We used to, those two loved making forts. It was one of the first things they would do when they'd come and stay with me is um, they'd have cushions off the couches, like the seat cushions were off the couch, chairs were dragged into the living room, blankets were brought down from the beds and they did it all themselves. I just supervised. <laughs> and then we sat underneath and we had parties in there and played in there and had a great time. Um, so how did your fort building go today? Did you go and build yourself a fort? We didn't get to that part today because I had to go get some legal stuff notarized and sent. So I had to go do that. So I got that done today. Um, and while I was out, it was very windy. There's a lot of dust blowing around out there, a lot. I think this whole side of Sparkles is just like covered in dust because there's a construction area just across the road from me. They're adding, um, I found out the other day, this is the biggest Thousand Trails campground in, in America. Um, it's got like a thousand sites, uh, roughly around a thousand sites here, and they're building another 350 across the road. <laughs> and because it's construction, it's considered an essential thing, so they're still, they've been building, but not doing social distancing very well, these construction guys. I went out this morning and they're all gathered around in one tight little circle, yapping, yapping away and checking on the plans and everything else, and I thought, well, that's not social distancing during a lockdown or during a stay-at-home thing, so whatever, not my problem. Um, 
So I went to get the stuff done and I had to wait because the woman who is the notary at the UPS store that I went to um, was busy fingerprinting another lady and I thought, well that's interesting, I've never seen that done in a UPS store before. And so um, after the other lady left and while she's doing all the paperwork for me and getting the copies done and everything else, I said to her, I said, just out of curiosity, I said, what's the fingerprinting for? And apparently in the state of Florida, um, she doesn't know if it's nationwide, so this is just here in Florida. Um, they now require, if you, um, she says, you know, anybody involved with kids, so social workers, child care, um, teachers, anybody involved in anything involving kids has to be fingerprinted and background checked. But she says, but now, if you, even if you are a parent and you're going on a field trip with your kids, they have to fingerprint you and run a background check on you to make sure it's okay for you to go. And I'm like, a parent has to do that? And she's like, yeah. If you go on a field trip with, with your child's class, you have to be fingerprinted and have a background check run on you. And they do the fingerprinting there at the UPS store and it gets sent into wherever it gets sent into so they can run the background check so that you're able to go with your child on a field trip. And she says, oh, she's oh, don't be surprised if it's nationwide soon. If it's not already, it will be. It's going to become the new norm. And I'm like, well, that's the first I've heard of that. And thinking of the number of field trips I've done with my, grand, with my grandson and not had to be fingerprinted or background checked, not that they'll find much anyway, but, you know, it was just sort of like, to go on your child's field trip, you have to have a background check run on you. Seriously? But that's what our world's coming to, apparently. Um, so that was kind of an interesting thing to learn. So after I finished the UPS store, I then um, whipped down to the Walmart that's just down the road here from the campground and um, ran in there, got a couple of things I needed, went over to the RV section, no RV toilet paper. So I thought, okay, that's fine. I've still got six rolls. We're still good. We're okay. Because um, for the RV, um, RVs and boats, you require a special type of toilet paper. We can't just go grabbing the regular toilet paper. It's got to be a self disinter It's got to be a disintegrating toilet paper that we use because of our septic tank tanks that we have on board, on board boats and on board um, the RVs here. So you have to have the disintegrating toilet paper. So it's a special type of toilet paper that you have to get. Camping stores will not ship. You have to go in store to get it because I've already tried that. Walmart has the, um, I get an eight pack and Walmart has the eight pack for around $5.84 for an eight pack, which is not too bad because during the four packs, if I get two four packs, it cost me more than $5.84, but I didn't have any, so it didn't matter. So I go, I so thought, well, let me check online and see what's available there. And it was $22 for an eight pack. I'm like, are you kidding me? They're talking about, and you know, they're talking about stopping all this price gouging and all that. The exact same brand that I get at Walmart for $5.84 is $22 online, plus shipping. And, and here's the catcher. It will be delivered sometime between April 11th and May 5th. I'm like, are you serious? I don't even know where I'm gonna be on April 11th, let alone May 5th. <laughs> I'm like, this is ridiculous. Um, so I, so as I'm checking, and I thought, whatever. I got whatever, all the other stuff that I needed, and I got to the checkout there, and I was talking with the guy, um, Austin. He was, he was awesome. Austin was a really cool guy today. And I said, look, I said, you may not know this because you may not, because I, I know you're up here on the cash register and stuff, so you may not know this information, but I'm going to ask anyway just on the off chance. He said, what, he said, what would you like to know, ma'am? I got a ma'am. And, <laughs> and I said to him, I said, just asking, I was over in the RV section and there's special toilet paper that they have just for the RVs and the boats and stuff and I was wondering if you have any idea when they're expecting more in. He says, well, he says, all I can tell you is that we close up at 8.30 tonight. The trucks are, deliver are delivered sometime between 8, um, have some overnight scheduled delivery. There should be some on that, but I can't guarantee it. And he said, we open at 7 o'clock in the morning for the seniors, 8 o'clock we open for everybody else. And he said, at that point, there may be some back there for that. And I said, thank you. I said, that's all the information that I needed. So I said, and um, he says, but you can be here at seven o'clock as a senior. And I looked at him, I said, <laughs> I said, you're such a sweetheart. I said, the hair may make me look like a senior. I said, but I'm not there yet. <laughs> and he says, he says, well, he goes like this. He goes, I don't think they actually check for IDs. And I said, knowing my luck, I said, when I arrive here, they will be asking for IDs. So I said, so I'll wait till eight o'clock. I have no problem waiting till eight o'clock and letting the seniors go in there and do their thing. I said, I'm not going to interrupt their time and maybe put one of them at risk, even though I've been self-isolating basically since I've been in Florida and not been out of the campgrounds very much. The only time I go out of the RV basically every day is twice a day to walk Zephy. Sometimes we go three times a day. 
um, just depends how much cabin fever we get but um, so um, so yeah so I'm gonna go back tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock to go in to see if they have RV toilet paper I will keep you posted on that and if they don't it doesn't matter there's plenty of other Walmart's around and um, I've still got six rolls so I'm good for at least another three four weeks so you know it's just big but I'd like to have one pack open and one pack ready to go that's my that's always been my system since I got the RV was have one eight pack open and one eight pack in storage and that's always and as soon as I open that that next eight pack you know you got to think about RVs we don't have a lot of storage space we have to be very um, somebody's put her ball under the chair again um, we have to be very strategic in um, how we organize our cupboards and our drawers and um, utilize, we have to be very strategic in utilization of space. Um, so I can't go buying a whole bunch of food, can't go buying a whole bunch of supplies and stuff because I have nowhere to store it. I do have under locker areas that I have um, a couple of um, big plastic totes in there that have like my um, um, like protein powders and um, backup stuff like that that is not heat sensitive. Because remember, if you put it down, if you put it down underneath at this time of the year, um, it's going to get very hot down there. So I have to be careful of what I put down there that it doesn't overheat, like cans and that sort of stuff. So that stuff has to stay inside. So it's sort of like, what do I need to put out there for when I need it? And what, so paper products can definitely go underneath the storage into those those plastic containers. Not a problem with those. Um, so yeah. So tomorrow morning, I'm going to get up bright and early head down to Walmart, see if they have the RV toilet paper. If not, it's not a big deal. I'm not at the critical stage yet. I still have plenty of time to get some, so I'm not panicking about it. Um, and who knows when I, <laughs> there's, there's dogs in amongst the grocery bags because I haven't unpacked from the grocery shopping yet. And I have put the, the, the refrigerated stuff away. The stuff that doesn't need to be refrigerated is still sitting down here in plastic bags and the dog's fishing her ball out from between the bags. Oh, you got it out from under the chair, good girl. Um, and I did bring home Chick-fil-A with me on the way back because I had to go past there. And I thought, you know, I haven't had that in a long time and I really can't be bothered cooking anything for dinner tonight. And so Zephy hadn't had waffle fries before. She's just normally had just the regular fries. And um, so she was very interested in those and it took her a while to eat them because she wasn't quite sure with the texture. But she enjoyed them when she did have them. So that's basically been our day today. It's been a busy day getting stuff done and um, learning new things today. And, you know, like people who need to go on their kids' field trips have to be fingerprinted and background checked. What the hell is our world coming to? It's crazy. Crazy, I tell you. Anyway, that's it from me for today. I am out of here tomorrow. Let's see. Oh, I've got my writers group tonight. We're meeting again online tonight, which is going to be awesome. Um, love meeting with my writing group and the fact that we're now all having to do it online. We're doing holding the meetings online at the moment because we can't meet in person. Um, they, we normally meet in Panera Bread and in, um, in Solana Beach, but because of all of the in, inside dining stuff being closed, that there's really nowhere. And the fact that San Diego's under the um, whole of California's under stay at home orders as well, this gives us another way we can do it. So I said, I've got a Zoom account. Let's get on there. Let's do our writers group. And they're sort of like, really? So we've set up drop boxes where we can put our writing in there. The other, when we've got time to go in and read it, and then we get on the Zoom and we do our regular meeting online and um, give our feedback and everything else. And it's kind of cool. It was it was really cool to catch up with everybody last week. So we've got that tonight, and then tomorrow it's going to be Walmart at 8 a.m., which means I got to set an alarm. I hate setting alarms. Um, it's just on the off chance that I sleep in and uh, make sure I get her walked before then as well. And um, what else have I got tomorrow? Accountability tomorrow. I'm trying to think what else. Oh, more work on the family tree project I'm working on. It's, it's getting interesting. It's very, very interesting. Um, getting lots of people in there and haven't been able to prove any of the rumors that she's heard yet or any of the stories or rumors that she's heard. Haven't been able to prove any of those yet. But that doesn't mean to say that they're not true because I've still got some areas that I've got to go research to see if I can make connections and find articles and that sort of thing. So still got a few tricks up my sleeve. We will keep you posted. But anyway, have a super fantastic sparkling evening and um, we will catch you guys tomorrow morning. And um, until then, hack on era.